unfiltered. I'm obviously not awake enough yet to pour coffee and try to film it. Cheers. On some mornings my husband gets lucky. And I cook him an omelet. This is his lucky morning. <laughs> What we have, y'all, is an exceptionally beautiful June day in North Carolina. The humidity has dropped. The temperature is low. I was wrapped up in a blanket drinking coffee on the porch this morning. Absolutely amazing. Not complaining. So we're moving some, yeah, we're moving some hay rings around. I'm going to feed a little hay to a small group of heifers. And enjoy this beautiful day it's a good day to be alive they're all good days to be alive i know that but some days it just feels better <laughs> today is one of those days grossed out by snakes they don't really bother me anymore because my husband is so pro snake this is a long one are you going buddy I'm going slow too I see you That snake was just a regular old black snake. We have lots of them and we've seen a lot more already this year than it seems like normal or I just don't notice them usually and I've noticed them a lot. Um, so they're not poisonous, they eat rats, so they get to live and thrive here. My husband is all about snakes. I'm not really all about them, but they don't bother me. I mean, as long as they don't bother me. The, the ones that we have to worry about are copperheads. Those are really the only poisonous ones around here. Um, don't see them often, but they're definitely around. So that's, that's the end of snake chat. Feeder has been in the way for months now. It's right where it was when it was muddy and it got mired in there. So we are gonna move it. didn't follow me over the winter this is this is remnants of what we dealt with all winter mud mud and more mud and more mud all right see how this goes A charm. Okay. 
charm might be a strong word. But it's out. It's out of the way. I don't know why this is really comical to me. Y'all, I'm in my truck. I've been up here near the barn in my trough is doing a little truck office work where I have cell phone res res I was trying to say service and reception at the same time so that came out weird anyway look we need this and we are supposed to get more possibly one to four inches one would be great we'll take it let it rain, let it rain, let it make grain. It's raining y'all. I'm getting wet and I'm not worried about it at all. I'm definitely not gonna melt. Float maybe, but not melt. Yay. Also, we have no gutters. Also, that's a problem. Also, I don't really care right now. I'm just glad to see it raining. <laughs> Not only does rain have an amazing sound on a tin roof, it smells amazing. When you haven't smelt it in quite a while, it smells amazing. Smells like feed. Money. Smells like money. We need that. Hey y'all. Tonight, I'm trying to do the impossible. I'm trying to make little mini sliders because... Hold on. Where are they? I got these little mini buns. Brioche. 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 I don't know how you say it. But they're really good and they're like small so the idea is to make little sliders right it's hard for me to take this hamburger and not make big whopping quarter pound patties like I'm used to but also I don't know if I've ever shown this on my vlog I have this little trick I do for making hamburger patties here I go with my really professional camera gear I'm, I'm on my knees um I, I take the hamburger and I make a ball. This is actually like a regular size one because I had extra and I know that we would want leftovers. My husband eats hamburgers for breakfast if we have leftovers. Anyway, like this one, it's a little smaller. And what I do to make my patties because I'm not good at like pattying it, I do this. Are you ready? Watch. One plate, two plate patty. It's like perfect. Oh, what do you think, Austin? Have you not seen me do that before? Yes, you have. I have not. Okay, well, it works amazing. It's like a little, it's like a little press, and it works so good. So, Which ones are the small ones? And I'm pretty proud of myself, because I actually, I came up with this on my own. I mean, I'm sure somebody else has done it, but I figured it out and did she's it. She's pretty smart when she's cooking. Tell the world that. What'd you say? She's pretty smart when she's cooking. I'm not paying her to say that either. Uh, that one. Okay, sometimes they come out like that and you still have to shape them. Which ones anyway, are the small ones? These are the small ones. Oh, okay. These are the small ones. An assortment of hamburger patties. It's good in the neighborhood. <laughs> You're not right. I know. That's why I like it. <laughs> That's why I like you. Raining, y'all. Slow, steady rain. We're happy about that, aren't we? Yes, Bonnie. All right. What we have here is a grill that was not cleaned, evidently. Okay, let's just turn it on. Um, what we also have here is a very dirty grill and a grill that has a bunch of hot spots and a farm wife who has not figured out yet exactly how to clean it. So, y'all can tell me. I'm thinking I just need to take the grate off, clean it, take all the briquettes out. I think maybe they just need to be replaced. I'm not really sure. But this is where it cooks. Like right there. Right there in the middle. 
it's really a pain. It is, it has become an art. No. Yeah. Art and science to try to figure out how to cook on this thing right now. Because I have to, I have to move things around so much. Anyway, that was a lot of words about turning on a grill. I mean, we already have a problem. I already had to flip and it's not done. So I guess I just remove it from there. But anyway, if these turn out good, it'll be a miracle. All in all, they look good. They're going to taste okay. They could be better. They could have been easier to cook. But at the end of the day, all that matters is beef and cheese in between some bread. It's all good. Okay. I've been putting it off. Here we go. You going with me, Bon? Into mine? All right. Let's go feed a baby and a milk cow. Feeding in the rain. We're feeding in the rain. <laughs> uh, I'm not complaining because we need this. Not complaining for a change. What you looking at, Willis? Come on, Stell. I hear ya. The ball gets escape. Yeah. Oh, I need to dump the water out. I know. There you go. Let's go, girl. So it's really time to wean Stella's calf, and we will be doing that very shortly. Whoa, kid. Easy on mama. And this bull is like a big puppy dog. He's actually a bull that we raised. No, we don't typically raise bulls. <laughs> we cut them and sell them as steers. But we needed a bull just for Stella, for our one milk cow. And um, he fits the bill fine. So he just hangs here with her and eats his feed. Man, we've actually got mud again. Haven't had that in a long time. So on a serious note, y'all, um, we watched the farm report this morning like we do most every Saturday morning and it was a hard one to watch, to listen to the markets, to see the pictures of flooding and to watch a grown man cry. Standing in his flooded cornfield. Standing in his flooded cornfield. And there is just a lot of uncertainty. I know this is an unprecedented year for weather. For so many people. So many people are struggling and one, one issue affects another. We are not struggling here like so many others are, but we're still being affected. We sold part of our calf crop last week and we feel like we just gave it away. We just gave them away. And you know, this is our, our yearly paycheck and commodity prices are high and raising and anyway, it's a struggle. It's a struggle for so many people. And I just want to throw this out there and just tell you, if you are someone who's struggling um, and, and not sure where to turn or what to do, I just want to say that asking and seeking help is absolutely never ever a sign of weakness. It is a sign of strength. And I'm going to link some resources in my show description notes um, if you need to talk to someone or find someone to talk to. Times like this are so stressful on farmers and their families and farms, period. And I just want y'all to know that you're not alone. We're never alone, even when it feels like we're alone. We're not alone. So if you're struggling or you know someone struggling, there's always, there's always a way out. There's always help and there's always hope. Hang in there. Fancy boot wash. 
works like a charm. To change the subject to something a little lighter and definitely sweeter. Um, this week, I learned something new from the interwebs, specifically Instagram. So, it's no secret that I have a deep abiding love of butter, okay? But I have been seeing where people leave their butter out all the time on the counter in their cupboard, not refrigerated. I do not do that. So I asked Instagram how many people did that. And the response was overwhelming with people that leave their butter out. So I'm joining the club. This butter has been out for a day and it's already halfway gone. That is the only problem. I'm finding now that it's staring at me constantly and telling me to eat it. So I grab a piece of bread or a cracker and I spread it and I eat it, but it's amazing. So I'm curious from my YouTube family, how many of y'all leave your butter out all the time? Is that a thing where you live? See, I mean, we're in the South and it's warm, but I mean, our house is air conditioned. So I'm assuming, hoping that this is gonna go okay. And considering the fact that a stick of butter is probably not gonna last more than two or three days, I guess we're safe. Also, I do remember my granny doing this. My granny Grace always left her butter out. And I don't know why I did not, I did not start doing that myself when I started keeping house. I don't know. But anyway, I just wanted to share that and get your take. So tell me, do you leave your butter out? And then I'm going to share with you my daughter's response that I posted in my Instagram stories because it's too good not to share. Hold on. What did you say? Why is the butter out? The butter is out because the rest of the world leaves their butter out all the time. And then it stays soft. And then we can spread it on wonderful things like bread. I don't have to microwave it anymore. Why did you never tell me this? Because I didn't really know it was a thing. We're, we're learning. The interwebs <laughs> are teaching us. It's a great day, right? <laughs> it's also a great day. Okay, one more thing. Last but not least, if you also have a deep abiding love for butter or someone in your family or a friend does, I have the answer, y'all. I have the answer towels spread butter spread love butter makes everything better because butter does make everything better bread crackers steak all the things butter is love you can go to my shop and you can buy a towel from me and i would greatly appreciate it babies need boots right mm -hmm. everybody should buy a towel from me right yes okay and you love butter, right? If I didn't, I would don't know what I would do. You don't know what you would do without butter. And I don't know what I would do without you. All right, y'all. Have a good one.